Welcome back for another video. This is Scott with the Cornhole Collective. You can find us on Instagram at Cornhole Collective. Also find us and follow us at Burley Bags and at Moss Boards. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. We've got a lot of videos coming, so stay tuned. All right, this video is gonna be all about cutting your holes. Now you can't have beautiful cornhole boards without a nice, perfect circular hole. And if you've been building for a while, you know there's a few different ways to make these holes. I'm gonna show you my favorite way to make the holes. Uh, uses a base plate template for your router. Should be a tool that you already have. This, in the end, is what you'll have, is either a plastic or MDF circular template to run your router around simple as that holes are perfectly clean you're not going to break your arm the first method that a lot of people use to cut their holes especially when they're new to making cornhole boards is a jigsaw now that's a easy way to do it but your holes are never going to be perfect and you know it's not going to look great uh, take my word for it my first three or four sets were made using a jigsaw the other way is with a hole saw so this is going to give you some nice clean holes but you have to have a powerful drill and you've got to have a strong arm it's going to torque a lot and these can go dull after a 20 or 30 cuts maybe more the other thing is in order to get these perfect holes, you've got to go from the top and then turn it around and come from the other side of the board uh, in order to avoid tear out. If you just push that through from one side, you're gonna have a huge blowout. Like you can see in here in this picture, those tear outs on those holes are just as bad as these boards. <laughs> you don't want your cornhole boards looking like this when you're done, especially from the underneath side. So the method that I use is definitely one that works. The tools that you'll need, it helps to have a palm router. This is the one I have, or Bosch Colt router. Um, and this is really helpful for actually making the jig. Also, you'll need a fixed base or a plunge router with a circular base plate. And that's the one that you'll use to actually cut the holes from here on out. Doesn't matter what brand. The method I'll show you is assuming that it's a six inch base plate and it's round. That's pretty standard. The bit that you'll need to share between these two routers is a up spiral cutting bit. You can find these at Home Depot, but I'll warn you, the Diablo bits that you find there, they will break. They tend to be very brittle. Uh, so I would strongly suggest that you get on Amazon and you order one that's a white side brand. And you can see 18 bucks on sale right now. I wish they were paying me. Uh, or you could order a nice one from Amana. Those are about $30, but those bits will last you much, much longer. And you'll be able to cut with a single pass instead of running multiple passes, which you'll probably have to do if you buy the Diablo bit. Okay. You'll also need a scrap piece of wood to use to make a circle jig. I like to use just a quarter inch piece of wood or MDF. Um, it needs to be as wide as the base plate of your palm router, or if you're using your uh, fixed base large router, it needs to be as wide as the base plate on that, and then at least a foot or maybe more in length. And then you also need, of course, the uh, material that you'll use to actually create the uh, base plate template. So I use uh, plexiglass acrylic sheet. It's about maybe a quarter of an inch or less, um, probably less, maybe an eighth. But the thicker this material, the better. You can get this from Home Depot. Um, you know, if you know somebody that's in the sign business, you can definitely use that. You can also use MDF, which works pretty well. But over time, MDF will get little dents in it, and that'll affect how perfectly round your holes are. Okay, this is what we're going to make first, and this is a circle jig that attaches to the base plate of your router. You're only going to use this to cut the template from here on out, then you'll just use your fixed base or plunge router to cut the holes. This is a fancy version. 
this is a little more like what mine will look like. Um, <laughs> mine's probably uglier than that, actually. Let me show you how to make this thing. So first off, you're going to remove the base plate from your palm router. And then use that base plate to drill the holes in your scrap. We're essentially going to be replacing this base plate so that we have something to swivel around a pivot hole. I'm sure you can see where this is going. So next we need to countersink these holes so that the bolts that hold this onto your router are recessed. You don't want those scratching the acrylic or hanging you up as you turn it. Before you attach it to your router, make sure you drill out a hole large enough for that bit to poke through. Okay, then you'll want to reattach this long circle jig to your router. And now you need to figure out where to place this. So as usual, your hole is going to be marked exactly 12 inches across the board at 9 inches from the end of the board. So make sure you mark your, um, your template with that as the center hole. And then drill a small hole through it right in the center that you're going to swivel around. Now, we need to think about how large this hole is going to be. So if you have a 6 inch base plate fixed router with a quarter inch bit like I do, then your large, the diameter of your large hole needs to be 11 and 7 eighths inches. It took me a while to figure that out, um, but that allows enough room when it's swiveling around and a quarter inch bit that you're left with a 6 inch hole in the center. So mark, you know, five and five and seven eighths, maybe a little bit more, just barely under six inches, because that's where the edge of your bit will need to land. 
now we're going to measure from the underside of our circle jig from the edge of the bit toward the toward the center of the wood scrap and that should be just barely under six inches okay and that compensates for half of the 11 and 7 8 large hole drill another small hole through that that you'll put your swivel point through Now here you'll see I used a small screw to swivel around the center point. You may want to use a nail. It'll probably turn a little bit smoother than a screw. That's just what I had in my tool bag there and it worked out okay. I didn't do this here, but I would suggest clamping down the plexiglass or MDF, whatever the material is that you're using, just to make sure that nothing shakes or jostles loose. Um, also, you're attached through the base plate, through the material, into your work surface so that it is not going to move at all. And that makes sure that your end point for this large circle is exactly where you started and you have smooth edges all the way around. So you'll plunge into the material, got to do that manually, and swivel around. Now measure your large hole, make sure that it's 11 and 7 eighths inches. I think I got this one on my first try. Lucky. You may want to try this with some cheap scrap first, just to make sure that you have the base plate pin in the correct position. If it's not exactly 11 and 7 eighths inches, you can just move that pin a little bit closer or a little further away to make sure that your large hole is exactly 11 and 7 eighths. Now you're gonna do a test run. So you'll install the spiral cutting bit into your large router. And then just extend it just a tiny bit past the base plate. I just wanna measure and make sure that this hole is gonna be exactly six inches. Then you'll plunge from the inside, push it towards the template, and then run your router around clockwise. And that might seem backwards uh, for the direction of a router, but just think of it this way. Your router is always going to run from left to right, and by going clockwise, you're running from left to right. And if you're going the wrong direction, it'll skip around on you. It won't cut as smoothly. Six inches on the dot. 
So here's a quick video of what you'll do after you have your base plate template created. You simply clamp it to your cornhole board tops, to your deck. And then you're going to plunge into uh, the center area and then push it towards the edge and then run your router all the way around and the center will drop out and you're left with a perfect hole. If your bit is not sharp enough or strong enough to run through in a single pass, you can do this in a couple passes, just extend it halfway, do a first pass, extend it the rest of the way, do it in a second pass, that'll work fine too. Just takes a little bit longer. All right, well, I hope you learned something new and I hope you stay tuned. We've got a lot of ideas for new videos, so make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications. And thanks everybody. Hope you have a great day. Good luck with your next build.